Today on our show, man, have you listened to Rover Red Podcast? Are you blood worthy like us? Do you want to learn more about the actress that plays both Leah and Evie in the show? Well, you came to the right place, man. All that is next on the Nerdy Nomicon. Con. I'm Robbie. I'm Brooke. Sometimes, occasionally, and today, and days I don't know why. Are are there times that you're not Brooke? I mean, I swear to God, you and Adrian got this like whole thing where occasionally you're Brooke and sometimes he's Adrian. I don't know where Adrian is. Adrian, flowers for Adrian. Hashtag flowers for Adrian. Flowers for Adrian. We, we still s- haven't heard from Adrian. It's so Brooke. So Robbie. Rover Red podcast has dropped. Woo! We talked about it with uh Christopher Bloodworth Souls or whatever his name was. Who? PJ Souls? <laughs> yeah, Christopher Bloodworth. I was just joking. Yes. He was lovely. I liked him very much. So the episodes have finally come out. Yes, they have. Absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. Very I can't. Cool. Very cool. And we've got another guest with us today. Yay! I'm sick again, people. So if I seem very tired, that's why. Yay! You're not sick again. You're still sick. Oh, my sinuses are trying to murder me <laughs> with their tiny knives. So we've got another guest. I, I don't Madison know. Martin. Hi. Yes, we do. <laughs> Madison, how's it going? Yay. Great. How are you guys tonight? Overall, we're doing good. I am snazzy palooza. Oh. <laughs> I'm good. So, Madison, from what I understand, plays some sort of role or two or seven in a little <laughs> podcast called Rover Red. I've heard. She Alone in the Apocalypse. An actress. Some yes. Sort. She yes. Acts. So, can you corroborate, dismiss any of these rumors? Um. Yeah. I'm basically the voice of Rover Red. <laughs> she is. She's. She. She talks to herself like me. I talk to myself too. <laughs> yeah. I've, it's. It's back and forth, over and over again, repeatedly. It's awesome. It's really good. It, it's I, absolutely I fantastic. I like to know I'm not the only one who talks to themselves. <laughs> so, so you not only play Leah, you also play Evie, a.k.a., as we were talking with Christopher, GLaDOS. It's like GLaDOS, her sister, like her second cousin, mm-hmm. very distant relative. Mm-hmm. But um, when I think of Evie, I think of like very southern, snarky, backhanded compliments. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a perfect way to describe her. Like, oh, you look so great today. Oh, and that's Evie oh, in a nutshell. Oh, lovely. So basically, it's Gladys mixed with you. I have, do not give backhanded compl- or insult, or compliments. All of my insults are out in the open. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I'm insulting you, there's no question that I'm doing it. Uh, that's why I'm not good at customer service. Yeah, you're terrible at that. Well, people shouldn't bring their giant dogs to the bank. That's just distracting for everybody. You stupid, stupid person with your dog. Not that I don't like dogs. I just don't like dogs in banks. Is the point. That was a small emotional rant. Continue. (laughs) That was beautiful. Thank you. So Gladys is Evie's distant cousin. So Evie is... Is it Evie or Eve? Evie. It's Evie. That's what I thought. Like the Pokemon. No, no, I thought so. Yeah. So Gladys is like Evie's distant cousin. And Evie still gets invited to Thanksgiving dinner, but she's like the, the... the robot that nobody really talks to. We are talking to your family, but not your branch. Yeah. Not your branch. That, that's basically Evie. Yeah. 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 You don't want to piss her off because you know that she's going to spread some crazy rumor about you. And all your family is going to be like, oh my god, did you really do that? Yeah. That sounds like a, a slag, and I slap slags. I'm the president of slag slapping. So, Evie, definitely awesome. Do you record, like yourself playing leah the main character of rover red mm-hmm. uh, do you record yourself like all the way through and then do evie or do you kind of like jump back and forth like i'm oh, almost picturing you sitting there with two microphones and you're just swiveling in your chair <laughs> I mean, how, <laughs> well, how exactly I tried does to this do transpire at first um i do evie first because she's more of a narrator and i can react to her leah's okay, more of the sense. reaction to the world that's going on right. so i have evie i make her voice all robotic and cool and she then does. i play it back and feed leah's lines into the mic that's that's smart that's, that's clever. extremely that's really smart yeah it's really good wow thank you yeah i just did it so <laughs> that's, no it's smart it's a, it's a good process now 
the the fact of the matter is I'm like trying to figure out your process because mm -hmm. even though you can audibly tell that it's the same person speaking, which is even written into the script about how this transpired, why you're hearing basically a different version of the same voice. It's the clearly two. Tunes. It's clearly two completely different personalities, and I I really think that you encapsulated that beautifully. Yeah. Be oh wow, thank you. Because I mean, even as Evie, it's like wow, that's Leah's voice. Okay, well that's the reason, but that is definitely not Leah because she's at all. Looney Tunes, and I'm not talking about our lovely guest. I'm talking about the character she plays as Looney Tunes. Who, Leah or Evie? They're both Looney Tunes. <laughs> you you Chris, got that right. Looney Tunes, in fact, he is crazy. He writes crazy oh my people. God. He, his writing is incredible. I mm -hmm. was a fan first. Mm -hmm. So working with him is like a dream come true. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, the way that he just makes worlds is unlike anything I've ever come across. How do you like he has everything planned out. He knows exactly where Jonah is. He knows every single little thing. And it's just, it's, it's mind blowing. We're to probably going to have to call a number that'll take us to a dating service. That'll take us to a, a dry cleaner. That'll take us to a bus station to find the answer. Cause he's crazy. He's yeah. crazy too. He would do that. He <laughs> would do that. That's the thing. He's like, haha. And then you'll get a shirt that says, are you blood worthy? Hashtag Brooke Heatley Palmer made that up. And I'll be like, aha, I am. Cause I made it. And then that was, <laughs> that was how I, uh, that was a self promotion there. So that's I what I did. that blood worthy. That, I asked it? how no one had ever said that. I was like, so what do your friends call themselves bloodworthy? He's like, no one has ever called themselves that. I'm like, well, now they will. Now they will. <laughs> now they will. TM, verbal trademark. That's a verbal trademark. Oh, and by the way, uh, to all of our listeners, if you haven't checked out Rover Red, hey, what's wrong with you? You no, need to be no, checking no, out no, Rover no. Red. Stop slapping slags. That's my job. All right, get on it. Thank there you, you go. All right. Rook's just taken to the slag slap in here. If you haven't listened to Rover Red, you need to get on that shit because it is insane. I believed in this podcast when Chris was talking about it. I believed it when they talked about it on Darkest Night. And then after I heard the kind of like prequel episodes, yeah, you really already kind of blew me away with your acting ability in those. Yeah. And then yep. the actual yep. episodes come out and your Evie is fantastic. More, oh, even so more much. than Leah, I really like what you're doing with Evie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Evie, I had to do a lot of character work for, mm -hmm. probably more so than Leah. It shows because Leah is, you know, obviously a fictional character, but is organic and, you know, still a human. At least we think she's a human. They never specifically said a race. I don't know. She's probably. I think she's cat. a human. I don't know. She so she, far. She could be a Martian like Jean Jones. She's a cat. And again, this girl is crazy. Not this girl. That Leah is crazy. Leah is crazy. I'm not. I'm pretty sane. <laughs> oh, we're I not. Think? Well, question? <laughs> I think if you're questioning it, you're probably sane. Yeah. It's the insane who don't question whether or not they're insane or not. Oh no, I have no. I have no delusions. I'm off my fucking rocker. No, I'm just saying. Ted Bundy <laughs> knew he was a serial killer and was perfectly okay with it. That's true. That's true. He was like, oh, we all have our hobbies. And I'm like, your hobby involves murder. That's weird. <laughs> but uh, no, the way you do, Leah, I mean, it's very believable. It's very organic. It's very personal. Evie is just very, very good. I mean, the way you bring emotion and, I don't know, confusion to it is really good. Not confusion, but you make the audience confused with your own motives and everything. I think it's very good. <laughs> thank you so much. That Wow, thank you. That's great to hear. Um, Evie is difficult. <laughs> She's all around difficult. Um, so that's why I had to do a lot of character work. She goes through a lot of arches throughout the show and her motives are often changed and questioned. Oh, unquestionably. Um, so <laughs> I, you know, I have this big notebook, basically I have a Leah notebook and I have an Evie notebook and I have playlists for both of them. And I do certain things to get into character for both of them. But Evie, I just had to, it's hard because with a human, there's always that basis point of like emotion, no matter how old you are, where you come from, you have emotion. Evie, has emotion but it's more programmed right than anything it's right. not natural it's it's a response so what is your playlist for evie i want to know <laughs> leah's too but what's your playlist for evie for evie my top two right now um is a song by porter robinson it's called sad machine it's very good and then my other one I don't know. I don't have my notebook in front of me because I have to like it's I have this whole like thing. I'm neurotic about it. Um, <laughs> hmm. I'm blanking right now. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're fine. Um, um, 
But yeah, it's very like, oh, Leah, God. It's very like rock 80s music. Are we talking like hair bands or are we talking like Kajagugu? Like Kajagugu. I can see that. I can see that Leah's too shy to shine. Yeah. Yeah. Like very punk rock, like Joan Jett kind of material. And I just, I have to get angry to be her. She has this kind of bubble of anger underneath her. Would you, in fact, say that she is strong, heartache to heartache? She stands? Oh, come on. Pat Benatar is great. (laughs) That was great. Um, In all serious, in all strongness, in all seriousness with (laughs) Leah, she, um, I think at the beginning she is not strong. She pretends to be. Yeah, that's where the best strength comes from. Yeah, and then she develops that through things that happen to her. And you can see that. Well, not see it, but you can hear it, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Anyway, <laughs> it's so refreshing to have this and to be a part of it. It, it blows my mind. <laughs> Absolutely. And more than anything, I think one thing that we really should say is congratulations on landing the role. Because Thank seriously, you. you also deserve it, man. I mean, you're you're very talented. Thank you so much. I mean, it's... Bob. Dream well, come true. <laughs> and by the way, if there is any sort of cake reference anywhere going on, we may or may not have inspired. We told him to put in the cupcakes. We did He's tell him like, to put in cupcakes. <laughs> and he was that like, would be great. Going to do that. Um. So how did you get the job? How did he, how did that get about? Tell me how that. Wow. Okay. Happened. So, like I said, I was a fan first, mm-hmm. and my freshman year of high school, I found Booth World Industries, which is a story of his that he put on our no sleep, mm-hmm. and. Uh, basically you call like a demon number service mm-hmm. hotline and they come and kill people for you. That's so fun. being the like edgy teen that I am, I'm like, I'm going to call this number. So I did. Mm-hmm. And I left a voicemail and he called me back and I was the first person to put a recorded response back up on the internet because some people would be like oh my god he called me but like would have no voicemail Mm -hmm. no recording phone call i was the first person to have a recorded response from booth world industries so that kind of got crazy big um (laughs) yeah i've got to be honest i think i've actually heard that recording you know what i have to say about chris I, i i think it really pays to be his fan because you either get put on one of his podcasts or you become his wife so it really, really like works out for you. Like he's like, yeah, I met my wife, and um, she kind of like talks me in the credits, and and uh, I ended up marrying her, and you ended up getting the job. So it kind of works out. I think you should be. Yeah. I think the basic point is be friends with Chris. Good things and will happen. Do crazy exactly. things for you. Exactly. So that's fun. That's yeah. Fun. So you put that up, and did more conversations happen after that, or what? Yeah, I had um on that channel. It was like. I would read scary stories on the internet, basically, because I wanted to improve my acting and I wanted to do it from home. So I would take my iPhone and just like record a little thing and post it on the internet, more of um, a way to track my progress Mm -hmm. rather than other people to listen. And he found that and he loved it. And he was like, this was like four years ago. He he, um, approached me and he was like, hi, I want to do this thing with you and I want you to voice the main character. And at the time I was getting approached with a lot of like fan made projects that would never really happen. So Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. Like this is going to happen. And then fast forward to May of this year. And he's like, yeah, um, I found a way to pay you. Let's do it. I just finished writing my book, dear mother, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I want to do this with you. And he was like, what microphone do you use? And I I said that I used my iPhone. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, that's not going to work. Not so so much, no. No. So he sent me a microphone and I had very minimal audio experience. And the first couple episodes I um, synced up, I did all the sound effects for, not the soundtracking, but the sound effects for. So I started getting some experience in that. And he just, I don't know, it's its pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy story. Incredibly. Yeah. So yeah. you're friends with Christopher Bloodworth. You comment on some of his stuff. Not only does he put you in a podcast, he gets you a microphone. Yeah, he doesn't get us anything. We're going to get t-shirts that say, are you Bloodworthy? 
Yes. You should. Oh, dude, I would stunt that like why crazy. Did you, why, why did you do that? When I went to high five, you did the you did the knuckles. That's not how that works. Are you are you Captain America? Have you not are seen you Double Nell? Dragon? Are you Nell from the movie Nell? <laughs> Hurtful. Truth. Ouch. Touche. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't send us stuff. I guess we're not friends, Chris. Well, to be <laughs> um, fair, we met him a week ago. If you listen, listen, I've known him for a full week. I expect to see returns <laughs> on my friend. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I mean, I a tell people thing. about Momos and Lush, so people should tell me about stuff. That's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, eventually, we'll get hats. <gasps> Ooh, Do nice. not get me excited for hats that'll say, are you bloodworthy? TM Brooke Heatley Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> the most important part. Is my name. All right, so if you um like okay, sorry. Oh no, if no, you no. um okay, so there's open suggestions for things that Leah can do during mm-hmm. voting periods. He did tell and, us that. Yeah, and if your vote um if your suggestion gets voted in, you get a free T-shirt. That's so cool. What a cool idea. Do you have any input on the things that are up? Like like does he run things by you? Like okay, these are the five scenarios, or is it like he just every anyone can vote on them or how does that work so anyone who's a part of the rover council can vote on them because Yay. they're secret hidden poll password protected mm-hmm. um i know all of the options that are going to happen mm-hmm. that he com- came up with mm-hmm. um and then the rover council can come up with another suggestion versus all the other ones that he did. You can just submit them. We'll go through them so it's not something crazy like, ha, ha, Leo, walk off a cliff, you know? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, um, of course not. So we'll go through them, and if yours gets voted in, you get a free shirt. And the shirt design is really cool. I'm the only one in the world right now that has a shirt. That oh, is, sure. Go that, ahead and brag about it. Know it's of. super cool. Oh, I know. I'm sure. Because okay. you got other stuff when we <laughs> proofed merch. I was like, that shirt is mine. That's awesome. So it can't be like Leah become a mutant sex robot because how would you how would you voice mutant sex robot? I don't know. This is not a visual <laughs> medium. This that is a, this is a auditory medium. This is not a visual. Um, it's uh, true. I mean, how would you be a mutant sex robot on the radio? You just wouldn't. You just wouldn't. Uh, no. It would take a lot of work. Yeah, I'm not sure it would happen. So no, don't suggest that people because it can't happen. I've decided. I've, no. I'm not even on the council, and I've decided that can't be an answer. Oh, I'm so. on the council. So. You no. should be. It's completely free. It's just an email. And you get three unpublished prequel episodes that you can't get anywhere else. Oh, I was rocking those the day after we finished Chris's interview. I don't know what this, I'm like, this yes. email is that you speak of on this. Isn't this just on the radio? Just go to like, you're, you're roverredpodcast.com. I don't, I don't know what the internet is. Is that a thing? <laughs> is this new? Have we just started this? Is it deciding our presidents now by how, how much they Twitter? It's brand new. <laughs> it's invented yeah. by Donald Trump himself. Well, I would buy that. The Dondle. <laughs> putting the away my rage. Putting no, away my rage. let's talk about this lovely, this lovely actor. Yes, exactly. Yes. Putting away Never the rage. Never heard of this internet. That's so cool. Fucking Twitter. God damn it. <laughs> did you just sneeze? So working with Christopher, <laughs> essentially, is like working with Stephen King. Like, he comes up with the weirdest, scariest stuff. It's true. Mm-hmm. I can't even... Oh my god! I can't sleep in bed. Beds are scary to me now. Yeah. Couches are scary to me now. Mirrors—I I mean, I can't walk past mirrors in the dark. Right? Yeah, that's actually one of my number one fears. Chris just wants us all to be uncomfortable. Yeah, that's and he, he, wants, he wants us to stand. He just wants us to stand in random hallways. Yeah, Always and I think. Me out, though. <laughs> I think part of the reason why Rover Red is so good and so innovative is because we really, you know, believe in each other and believe in what that what we can do right basically so we build each other up to make this great thing for everyone that's very cool i mean i'm, I'm telling interested. you right now as not only a podcaster but as you know a fan of this show you guys are nailing it it's, because yeah, i am flat great. out addicted to this show you need rehab you need rover red rehab i rover do rehab. need rover red rehab that should be the name of the forum and the wiki for the people who love the rover reds the mm-hmm. rover red rehab that would be so cool. Someone needs to get on. People out there, do get on that because I'm too lazy. But someone else get on that. Yeah, let, let's start the subreddit. Up, I come up with the names. The rest of you go out and you do it. The Bloodworthy, the Rover Red Rehab. Come on, people. Let's get on You're this. just on a roll. I am on a roll. She is. Damn. For someone that's sitting there, oh, I'm exhausted. I have I'm no really energy. Tired. You won't let anyone get a word in edgewise. I'll stop talking. I'll sit over here with my cat. One other question that I do have about Rover Red. Then we can go back to, you know. So there are... Four different factions in the Otherware. Yes. They are based on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Yep. 
all right, are the four factions that are based on the four horsemen, are there like personality traits that all of these different groups exemplify? Like famine is really, really, really greedy and war is obviously warmongers. I mean, what really fits people into these groups? Or are they just random people in these cities or in these factions named after these people? I don't think anything Christopher writes is random. I think everything can be connected back to something else. And that's why I was asking. Mm. Yeah. So basically every single faction has a creed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can't say what those creeds are yet. You guys will find out what they are. But it's kind of like their pledge of allegiance in a way. It's their way of showing pride Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. they're from. And the... um, The four different horsemen are very competitive with one another. So if you're from Conquest, you're not going to talk to someone from Famine. Ever. It just doesn't happen. Gotcha. Okay, so kind of like a Hatfields and McCoy type situation here. In fact, shenanigans that that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's very... It's very... I'm trying to find the right word. It's like competitive in a way okay Mm -hmm. um because they all want the most land they want their faction to be the best faction Mm -hmm. and we'll go to whatever lengths in order to eliminate the enemy gotcha gotcha so the number one reason i was wondering you know if there were personality traits that kind of exemplified it you know kind of like in um that Divergence. Thank you. You, I love how you immediately know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was actually thinking we need to figure out some sort of like Rover Red litmus test, mm-hmm. the factions litmus test, where where we would fall into these. That as- can go into the Rover Red rehab like subreddit. Oh my god. Oh, I'm just like- yeah, and you can like have a different course of treatment depending on which one you are. Yep, yep, yep. Brilliant, brilliant. Let's let's go with this. I love yeah. this. I love this. Rover Red litmus test. Fans, <laughs> get on it. Get on this. Let's go. Yes. So how far in advance do you know? Do you know the whole plot or do you are you only given like that episode or do you have a basic idea, but he might change his mind? Like, do you know what's coming or is it like the creators of Lost who no one knew what was happening ever? They got the script and were like, oh, I guess I'm dying today. And that was kind of the end of it. Yeah, it's more like Lost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are some things he tried to give me but i made that choice consciously as an actor not to get certain information Mm -hmm. like where jonah is if jonah is alive because i wanted my reaction to be more authentic when i find that out Mm -hmm. so yeah it's mm, he loves to leave stuff on cliffhangers Mm -hmm. so if i wasn't in the podcast i would be a fan of the podcast oh unquestionably yeah it's good to be a fan of your own work yeah. If I I would get a script and I would yell at him and be like, Are you serious? You ended it like this? <laughs> really? That's hilarious. Because it I just wanted more of it. Yeah. 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 Smart. Right. The ending of episode two, seriously, I was legitimately pissed off. I'm sitting there, I'm like, Oh, I'm so happy. Two episodes, two full episodes dropping on pilot day. Really? You end it like that? Oh, I've got to wait yeah. two weeks for this. Two weeks? It's every two weeks? It's, it's every two weeks. weeks. Well, I don't know nothing about nothing. It's every two weeks, people. Yep. Every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And on the off weeks, if you uh, go to their Patreon page, which you can find in the show notes, you can get access to uh, some of their like mini episodes in there too, which kind of help to um, fill in the world. Mm -hmm. The mini episodes that were uploaded on iTunes, I believe are only going to be up for a limited time. So you can get a taste of what that's like. And if you want that to continue, if you like that kind of storyline, you can subscribe to us on Patreon to get access to those. Oof. And those little two minute cookies that you guys get there. I call them cookies because they're little bite sized morsels. They, they definitely uh, got me intrigued in the secondary story. I I don't want to call them M&Ms. I want to call them cookies. Cookies can be big. I like cookies. Literally, those are just words. (laughs) You're just saying words. Everything is just words, technically. You say words all the time. So this is what happens when I have two women on here attacking (laughs) me. Okay, so what's next for you after this? Obviously, you want this to continue, but what else do you have going on? College, Hollywood, L.A., Broadway, New York, or London Way. I mean, what, Tokyo? What's what's up for you? What's your plans? Since you're 17, you're embarking on the world. 
still have hope. Life hasn't completely lost it from me yet. <laughs> You're not sad and depressed like the rest of us. Oh, God. Um, well, realistically, I really want Rover Red to be successful. And I want it to, you know, continue to grow. Mm-hmm. And through Rover Red, I want more jobs. You know, if I could just get one other job from this i would consider that a success yeah that's a good one that's a great success that's a great way of looking at it yeah it's awesome yeah i'm not sure if i want to go to like la or chill in new york yet (laughs) stay in new york seriously we live in la no offense to la listeners but that is a nonsense city with nonsense people new york will tell it to you to your face la will stab you in the back i'm just saying New York is where you want to be, or Toronto. Weirdly, yeah, I yeah, Toronto's there. good. Love Toronto's, Toronto. yeah, Toronto's big. Uh, New York's huge for the indie scene, they're which saying, is really up and coming. Saying London is a good place to go to. Yes. London is fantastic. But you I gotta visit compete London. if you're in England. Like in England, in London, their actors actually go to college. If like they, that's expected of them. So if you don't yeah. have a college degree, you try to go to London, like a, a fine arts degree. They're going to be like, go back to school. Like, yeah. look at the cast of Game of Thrones, with the exception of the kids, like the little kids. Mm-hmm. They all have degrees. Like I was yes, shocked. I was like, Kid Harrington has degree in acting i was like what did they teach him how to be sad they did a really <laughs> good job he got an a plus of being sad but but over here but he's happy he's like still sad but i'm just saying that that's that's so brilliantly <laughs> worded i mean he has a degree in fine arts from the dramatic academy from like london and i'm like what did they teach him so oh, if we were God. gonna go to london i'd say get you have to get college first because sure. yeah, yeah it's yeah. considered a craft and it's considered you go to school yes and you don't just go i mean it might be changing but when you look at the you know, if you look at all the doctors, they all have degrees. Right. <laughs> they all actually have degrees in acting. Um, so I'd say New York is where I'd go. Yeah. I, I mean, I love New York. New, New York, York is the is, best. Love New York. Yeah. I agree with that. I'm sorry. Deep dish pizza is disgusting. No offense. New York has the best pizza in the world. We're New Yorkers. We agree. We love here, pizza here. in New York. Mm-hmm. I love Manhattan. Mm. So awesome. Brooklyn's great, too. I've heard Queens That's where is I up live and coming. For a while. Queens is great. I would not live in the Bronx, but that's because I don't want the zoo animals to get me. And I'm talking about the actual Bronx zoo animals because they have giant, they have they have giant zoo there. And if they ever escape, they're going to eat us all. That's terrifying. (laughs) Maybe not the Bronx. And it's not a big place. If those animals ever get out, they're going to eat you. What do you mean that that's terrifying? You create nightmares, or you bring nightmares to reality? What was it that you said to me? Yeah, like I just I bring nightmares to life Ah, because she's an actress acting out words. She brings nightmares to life. But no, they're just words. Uh, see, here, I thought that there was a lot more coming She's from this. She's not magic. I mean, that I know of. I don't know her. She could be magic. Are you magic? Well, she's not going to tell um, you on air. She no comment. tell me on air. Then the government's going to come and do experiments on her. It's they totally... didn't do experiments on Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange isn't real. He's a little real. No, it's just Benedict Cumberbatch. Fun. Have you seen Stranger Things? I know you guys have. He he has. Love it. I was delirious from not sleeping, so Shut I did not see it. I saw the I saw images that I just couldn't my brain couldn't deal with. But yeah. you can talk about Stranger oh, Things. Oh, I loved Stranger Things. I thought it was so fantastically made. So it was, it was nice great. to see Winona Ryder getting work. Yes. I love Winona Ryder. Yeah. I love her. The whole concept of the upside down was brilliant to me. You know, seeing that alternate dimension, it's night and there's soot and everything like that. It it was very Silent Hill-esque. Yeah. I loved it. It was fantastic. And those kids are so talented. Extremely. The Upside Down was more Silent Hill than any of the movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's Harrington so... being sad. That's what very they true. Kit Harrington, and he's very sad in Silent Hill. He's just as sad as Silent Hill as he is in Westeros. And it's like, dude, get a cookie, get some juice, and get a smile on your face. My God. Kit Harrington, if you're listening to this, be happy. You have beautiful hair. Life is not that bad. Fuck up, soldier. <laughs> All right, so that's so that's the plan. We're working on Rover Red. We're going out, you know, thinking about maybe London, possibly, probably New York, by the sound yeah. of the due to the pizza. And I also know for a fact that you don't have comic book shops where you're around, and that's just horrible travesty. How do you know where she lives? I know, we talked about, we talked about it. On Twitter. I know she lives well, like, in Connecticut. Well, they don't have anything in Connecticut. That's a I know. nonsense state. That's what I'm people saying. people go to die. Oh, my God. I literally say that all the time. Where have you been? <laughs> it's a state where white people go to die. I thought that I was Fort Lauderdale, Florida. No, that's where Jewish people go to die. <laughs> there are white Jewish people. No, no, no. But there, there are white people in Connecticut, and then there are Jewish people. They are not the same type of white person. Very that different. That is very true. That is very true. Jewish I people tell... at least have a little bit of flavor. Connecticut people are bread people. 
They're yeah. Really bred people. Yeah. I tell everyone that that's where people who don't make it in New York go to to no, like it's the live. People that are too boring for New York City. They kick them out. They're like, you are t- bring come here to work and give us your money, but then you need to go back because you are boring. You are white bread people. We don't need white bread right now. We need not white bread. <laughs> we need a little bit of potato bread. Potato bread is delicious. It, I agree. That's why interesting white people like Russian people live in New York. They don't live in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. White bread people. You know who lives there? You know what happens in Connecticut? Wasps Nothing. get together and they create clubs. It's terrifying. That's well, very true. They oh get together God. and they, they start rotaries and they start rowing clubs. And Not they start the rotary. Garden, and they start garden clubs. And you know what else they do? They vote. They start they clubs have, like, and they wear clubs. dockers. That's all they do in Connecticut. It is a nonsense state. It's where we, oh, it's when, when, when the world finally ends, that's where we're going to put all the white people. Not us white people, but like, you know, boring white people. We still need them to make money because they under, they're the only ones that understand accounting. But <laughs> I just want to preface this now that we're in Trump's America. I don't identify as white. I am albino Cambodian. Okay. <laughs> I don't lump me in with those white people. I wasn't. I would say those are the white people that wear dockers, have little dogs named Dixie and actually understand accounting. That's why they're rich. They understand accounting. Right. The rest of us don't understand. And I'm saying this as like the administrator and accountant of my company. Um, but I'm not really the accountant. I'm the administrator. But I'm saying this as that's where we put the white people who understand money but are boring. They're not the fun stockbrokers like the Patrick Bateman serial killer stockbrokers. They're like the boring ones. So the Patrick Batemans are the fun ones? At least they're interesting. They're not super boring. And the guy had great pants and amazing hair. And he really cared about it. Like, I understand that he was a serial killer, but he really cared about his business card. And I can appreciate that. I appreciate a serial killer who appreciates uh, embossed text. So that's what I have to say. Anyway, point of this long rant is Connecticut is a nonsense state. No offense to people in Connecticut. I love you, but you live in a nonsense state full of white people. If there was ever a blizzard, we wouldn't find Connecticut till spring. <laughs> I would have to say that that is a mid-episode promotional rant from Brooke Heatley. I have a lot of feelings on oh, the state God. of Connecticut. That is so true, though. I can't argue with any of that. Just saying. I there, can't. Just put it this way. If there was like a blizzard in Florida... We'd be able to find Florida. But if there was a blizzard in Connecticut, it'd be like, where did Connecticut go? Guys, where's Connecticut? Seriously, where is Connecticut? Oh, there's Connecticut. Nobody even knows where Connecticut is on a map. They point to, like, the Midwest. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't exist. Uh, to be Let fair. me put it this way. Rhode Island is a teeny tiny little island, a little, like, little place that exists. And we care more about Rhode Island. You know why? Because that's where the, the Griffins live. On Family Guy, they live in Rhode Island. That's why we mm-hmm. care about Rhode Island. Oh, I thought you were talking Fantastic Beast there for a second. I was like, the Griffins are in Rhode Island? <laughs> they, they might be. I don't know about Griffin mating patterns or migrational patterns, mm. so they might live in Rhode Island. Dude, we need to <laughs> go to Rhode what? Island. You know I, I literally just glazed over <laughs> there for a second. Do you know where Griffin, I'm like, wait, sh- Rhode Island. Do you know where Griffins don't live? In where? Connecticut. That's true. You know what lives in Connecticut? Very true. Unicorns. Boring white people. Unicorns That's live there because they're white and they'll disappear. Oh my god! Just, just white people and white dogs and white cars and white slacks. And with that, we lost our entire Connecticut listening demographic. All six of them? I think we'll survive. <laughs> okay, I think we'll live. Oh, we also no. lost our LA demographic, which was like ten people and a and a donkey. But and that with... was not racist. I saw a donkey in in LA, and I was very confused. Oh well, yeah, I saw. The it was same just donkey. hanging out. I was like, why is there a donkey in the middle of LA? And everyone looked at me like, why wouldn't there be a donkey in LA? And I'm like. Joke's on me. Joke's on me. You're right. Why wouldn't there be a donkey? That is a true story, by the way. That is a true story. That's a straight up true story. I saw a donkey. It was weird. That's beautiful. I mean, it was a good looking donkey. Yeah, it was a beautiful donkey. I mean, can donkeys be beautiful? I yeah, mean, you can was... find, try to find the beauty in anything. It was man. like less ugly than other donkeys. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, oh my God, that donkey has face herpes or anything. Right. It, <laughs> oh it was God. not like the Ryan Reynolds of donkeys, but, you know, it wasn't. The, the Ryan Seacrest. Yes, yes. It, uh, I think I love Ryan Reynolds, but I think Ryan Reynolds is the Ryan Reynolds of donkeys, and he would probably agree with me. I think that's probably accurate. He would. He'd be like, I totally am. That's to- <laughs> oh my god. Hashtag I am the donkey. The Cuckoo Ryan- Kajub. Let's talk about our person that we're actually interviewing. Yes. I went on my long anti-Connecticut rant. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's me every day. Do not apologize. I am like the, I'm like the, you know how we talk about how we need a, like a, an ambassador? 
Mm. I am yeah. definitely not the ambassador. Of Connecticut. <laughs> like, they were going to call me to be the ambassador of Connecticut. <clears throat> I lost my ambassadorship to Connecticut, but that's fine. You because... not only lost the ambassadorship, you were banned from Connecticut. But listen, you may or may not be able to go back listen, there. I have never, I don't need to go to Connecticut. What do they have there that they don't have in other Nothing. states? Do they have tulips? Nothing. Do they have tulips in Connecticut? Yeah. Because I can also go to Holland. And, and get they're tulips. mediocre tulips, yeah, frankly. I can go to Holland. Sorry, Connecticut Garden Club. Yeah, you're a oh, small oh, state. It's snap. only one garden club. They've board. already started three garden clubs since this damn podcast because Tipsy Robinson and Lemon Stevens got into fight about the proper color of tulips. So now they have two different tulip clubs. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why the hell is Lemon Stevens in Connecticut? Because that name is awesome and I want to be that person's friend. I don't know. I was actually stealing names from Gilmore Girls when she, um, because she, the Because it's in Connecticut. I was stealing it. True. That's the only place that makes sense. And like the only place that I'd go to in Connecticut is Stars Hollow. And I don't think that place is real. It's not I think real. It's fake. It's you know how we know it's Haven, fake? Though. We know how it's fake? Because nobody that cool would live in Connecticut. That yeah. town is clearly in Greenwich. <laughs> and to be fair, Stars Hollow, as you have many times said, is literally just Twin Peaks minus the bordello and the demons. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I really believe that Gilmore Girls took place in like... Oh, uh, like West Twin Peaks. I was going to say Oregon, but they couldn't They couldn't get licensing because Oregon was like, nah, we're good. <laughs> Dude, we're doing this weird like cleanse right now and we can't have more shows. So that's what happened. They're like, I guess we'll move it to Connecticut. For the record, we really are usually this rambly and incoherent. Yeah, we're, we're not talking over you. You should hear this. No, I episode. know. I've listened to your show. It's okay. I just talk about nothing. Yeah, the Chris episode actually is not yet. It, comes, <laughs> it goes up at midnight. Does it at midnight? Eastern yeah. Central Time or just Eastern Time? Eastern Central Time. There's two different times. How can that be? Because I, I have it right there. I have it right there on the time zone. Did you know if we lived yep. in Australia, it'd be tomorrow. Well, we don't live in Australia because we're not time traveling nonsense people. What does time travel have to do with Australia? We'd be teleporters at that point. You can I, Australia exists right now. We don't have to travel through time to get to Australia. It exists at this moment. I know because I have a friend in Australia. Oh, look at me. I miss have a friend in Australia. Her name is Laura, and she has a horse. Wow. If I lived in Australia, I would have a kangaroo. I guess I'm just cooler than Laura she, with the horse. She wrote a fan fiction about Dr. America. I'm sorry, Captain America. Dr. America? Dr. America. <laughs> Listen, they had a baby. I don't know. I wasn't really reading. I didn't really read it, but I've heard it was really good. Who had a baby with Dr. America? <laughs> Captain America and Dr. Strange. They had a baby named Dr. America. What? I would watch that movie. I would watch the shit out of that movie. I'm sorry. Doctor Strange and Captain America, like, adopt a baby? Oh, my God. I'm trying to think of the jingle for that right now. Madison, would you not watch that? I would watch that. Not watch that. That seems interesting. Right? Did I not go on the Captain America straight rant a few weeks ago? Yes, but they don't have to be gay to adopt a baby. I considered so what, doing it with Hobart. Did the Avengers just adopt a child? Like, did they do the Avengers adopt a child program and they all adopted a child together? Yes. Like as a team. But Doctor Strange isn't on the Avengers. So how did that happen? He's like an honorary member. See? So you're telling me that the Hulk. Like Spider-Man. Now- yes. So the Hulk is now raising a baby with Spider-Man? <laughs> oh, them- no. Th- those two would definitely not pair up. I think right, yeah, they, they would, would kill kinda. the child. Okay. Wait, well, yeah, because Spider-Man's like 12. He shouldn't be having a child. He's too young to have children. And the Hulk, dear God, man. In fact, Tony Stark is very irresponsible bringing little Mr. Peter Parker into the team since he's like 12. And it's like, dude, that guy's going to die. He's like 15. Mm-hmm. It's okay. He is he's not actually old 17? enough to be a cop. He should so... not be taking over the world. He's 17. Well, like oh. me. Listen. So... You can't listen. Vote yet. You can't save the world. It's the rule. <laughs> Hashtag Spider Man Truther over there. Listen, he isn't even in proper control of his faculties because he's a 17 year old boy, not a 17 year old girl. There's a difference. 17 year old girls are more mature, they're more responsible. 17 year old boys are still obsessed with their penis. It's just, <laughs> I don't trust him to save people from, you know, like Doc Ock because he'll see like a pretty girl and then he'll be like, I have a boner. I can't save people from Doc Ock because no one wants that photo op of like boner Spider-Man saving well, a child. To be fair, I'm 31 and I still, you know, have a pretty good relationship with my penis, but I would still take on Doc Ock. I would just have Let a semi while doing it. You're also, why are you have, you're also an adult. Yes. You have rational thoughts. Remember yes. when you were a 17 year old boy? Oh God, yes. Do you think you could have saved the world? Oh God, no. Exactly. <laughs> That's because I was high. Yes, but Spider-Man. High. Spider-Man just had his DNA rewritten by a spider. 
Yes. And so his, how do you know that he's not less he, horny? And his uncle died. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, you don't really know where those webs are coming from. Exactly. I don't trust him to save the world. I don't trust him to save a pizza. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure Disney would not make that movie. I don't trust him. <laughs> he can call me when he's 21. <laughs> go, Web, go. Let me, let me put it this way. Do you know what the basic requirement to join the Avengers should be? Like, be 21? Be able to drink? No. Be able to rent a damn car. Because freaking... Rent a car doesn't trust you with a car yet, but you're expected to save the world? No! If you can't rent a car, you can't be an Avenger. That's just the law. I think that's pretty fair. Unless they change the rules that kids can rent cars, and in which case, my argument is invalid. If Enterprise rent a car deems 17 year olds responsible enough to rent cars, then they can save the world. <laughs> Until that happens, enjoy high school, be a kid, don't save the world. Unless you have to. I mean, in which case, you know, I understand. But he should be like, he should be on the soccer team. Uh huh. He should be dating girls. He shouldn't be. Tony Stark should not be recruiting him for top secret missions. Also, why is Tony Stark following a seventeen-year-old boy? That's weird. Tony Stark shouldn't be. following He didn't him. follow a seventeen-year-old boy. He knew where he was. He had heard. I mean, of that's kind of following. That's like stalking. He not only knew where he was. He knew his name. He knew who his his aunt was. He knew his measurements enough to build him a damn suit. That's creepy. That's. We have a son. Uh huh. Bill Gates comes with a magical suit for Max. He knows his exact measurements. You wouldn't be like, this is weird. This really? is a weird thing. You go for Bill Gates because Tim Gunn could probably do it. Tim Gunn is a fashion designer. Well, t- fashion teacher. Designer this is, teacher? This has nothing to do with it. Yeah, basically. Ask this girl some questions about herself. She is an actress. She's doing stuff with her life. She's clearly going places. And we're having a fight about Spider-Man. Let's talk to this actress. I didn't think we were having a fight. I actually rather enjoyed your take on Spider-Man. Listen, Spider-Man... And Madison interjected with the web sling. I trust 17-year-olds. They're not They're not 15-year-olds. They're I'll, smart. And again, I would watch that movie, they're too. They're legitimate people. They're humans at that point. They're, they're human beings by this point, I would Bye. think. I think I'm a person you're by now. You're absolutely a person, 100%. However, there are certain things in this country that say you're not an adult yet. If you can't be legally tried as an adult, you shouldn't be allowed to be an Avenger. Does she have feelings to hurt? I don't know. Does she? Oh, that, that was a Rover Red reference. Oh. Don't give me <laughs> I thought so. I thought so. I listened to it twice. I'm not quite to the level where I can remember things. I think that's good. It's only been out a couple of days, and I've listened to both episodes twice. I think that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good, I would say. Yeah. It's more than, 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 than other people. That's true. Less than some, I'm sure. I'm sorry. Continue. Ask her about her likes and her dislikes and her thoughts, opinions, and fears. Maybe not fears so much, because I bring nightmares to life, so... I okay, so tell us about these nightmares, because we just we just hit a nail here. So tell us about these nightmares no. that you're bringing to life. So you asked her what shows and TV shows she likes. Yeah, and- we moved on from that. We've moved on from the tea show, from the TV from shows. From the tea shops? The, from the tea <laughs> shops. We're no longer in Japan. We have- We've gone from Japan to the nightmare realm, okay? We've so, gone to the Echo Bazaar. So here. Japan? Yes, okay. pretty much Japan. Okay. Only we're yeah. in Japanimation now. Well, bathrooms in Japan are pretty scary. Oh, they have, like, horrible. bathroom demons. Like red paper, blue paper, whose name I'm forgetting. So nightmares becoming reality. I- I'm still trying to get to the bottom of that. I mean, are you writing stuff? Are you audio narrating stuff? She's or... auto narrating Rover Red, which is nightmares becoming reality. It's I don't the understand. post-apocalyptic world. It's not a nightmare. How is that not a nightmare? Have you seen Mad Max? Unless you're Mad Max or Furiosa, you either don't get any water or you're raped by a weird dude with a mask. That does not sound like fun. Does that sound like fun to you? Does that sound like something that's enjoyable? Well, he at least got to play ship's mast <sighs> when they strapped him to the front of the car. People were drinking his blood, Robbie. That doesn't sound fun. That's like a Key and Peele sketch gone horribly awry. <laughs> 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 no, I know. This is just the best. Oh, my God. <laughs> are you enjoying your uh, first interview podcast? I'm assuming this is your Most first. Most of them are going to be a This lot. is my first. Okay. When you become a famous actress, much they'll be much more, you know, res- like what's the word I'm thinking, professional. They'll actually have questions that they ask you. You'll wear a dress. They'll talk about what the designer is. It'll mm-hmm. actually be in... They'll talk about she your, might be wearing a dress right now. They'll talk now. about we your know. process. We're not going to do any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about the process. Well, no, I mean, I'm actually genuinely interested in process. Yeah, you know, as am I. I've acted, you've acted, I write, you write. I understand process. I understand mm-hmm. characterization. But she's going to be asked those questions forever. Yeah. I'd rather ask her questions like... 
Where, what kind of comics do you enjoy reading? Why shouldn't Spider-Man join? Well, this is why I think Spider-Man shouldn't join the Avengers. What do you uh-huh. think? No one is going to ask you those questions. Even if you're in a damn Marvel movie, they're not going to ask you those questions. That's true. Because Disney won't let them. Because mm-hmm. Disney will only let us answer serious questions. Disney would be like, what's your eating habits like as Black Widow? Exactly. Which is BS. All right, now I'm going to go on a small little rant. Why the hell did they have to give Black Widow this stupid love triangle? Arc? Oh, it wasn't a love triangle. Oh, it's just she was the love interest of the Hulk, which makes yeah, literally it makes no, no sense. sense. Why did she? Because she's a girl, and because that's such bullshit. Girls, yeah, such bullshit. Girls are literally allowed to have two. Uh, girls are allowed to have one plot point, and that's having a relationship. No matter what the movie is, the girl has to have a relationship. I think Jessica Jones, even Jessica Jones did it, although it made sense with Luke Cage. It made perfect sense. But yeah, you can have a movie. I was thinking about it. You can have a movie like The Predator. Mm. No love interest. No one even talks about women. But if the lead character of The Predator was a girl, she'd have to have a love interest. It's just the law. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. It's, it's such- ridiculous. I'm, I'm saying this as somebody who enjoys a love story. Mm-hmm. I, I think that... You know, bringing this, them. bringing this full circle a little bit, though. You know, even looking at The Hunger Games, a huge, huge aspect of that really was the love but aspect worked, you know with Peta and with gail it worked in the but that was games. different in a it way because worked. at first like she was only with Peta to survive right. which i liked i, I thought that was it. great i thought it was great right but my point is now we're getting <gasps> rover red and at least so far zero love interest she it's a story love- about you know your home is fucking destroyed you're trying to find your brother i don't I see love chris that. writing a love interest i don't either. i don't Either. I think he's far too I don't think he'd want to do unless it made a lot of sense to the plot. I don't see him like that's such a trope in post apocalyptic yep. in post apocalyptic stuff surrounding women. That's such mm. a trope because like if you think about post apocalyptic stuff with men, Mad Max is another great example. Does he ever had a love interest? No. He had, uh no, his love interest died in the very first movie and I mean, even since in, then he gets subjugated. Even People in, keep forgetting that. Even in Road uh, Warrior, I think him and Furiosa were like buddies. They were like compadres. You mean Fury Road. But Road Warrior was a different. I movie. meant Fury Road. I'm sorry. Um, even him and Furiosa, they were like buddies. They were like yeah. buddies in arms. Yes. In fact, it was the side characters who got a love interest, which I thought worked. It was great. I but, do too. You know, but think about it. If, if girls always have to have love interests, and it's really annoying, so she doesn't need a love interest. I agree. I don't think so either. And again, like, I'm saying this as someone who likes love interest. I genuinely write them all the time. I like them, but they don't need to be written all the time when you don't when guys don't have to have them. And that mm-hmm. is one thing mm-hmm. that Hollywood specifically cannot get over. See, with Leah, I don't think she has time. I no. really don't. She is. She has so much going on. She doesn't need a boy. She doesn't need two boys. She, she doesn't have time to fucking read the Book of Rover. She doesn't need any boys. She, she doesn't even know what that is. Right? She doesn't know half the stuff in it. I'm like, honey, sit down. Read the book. It's okay. <laughs> she doesn't need any boys or any girls. She doesn't need anybody. She needs a, she maybe, doesn't. maybe a llama. She can get a friend that's a llama. She, she needs to find llama. her brother. Well, that's what she pack needs to do. Animals, what I meant, and then she could use it to carry stuff. All right, you know what? That's a good point. I thought you were talking about companionship. I'm, I was about to say she's got Evie in her head. Well, she's got Gladys she talking le- about cake. Maybe she's a less crazy companion, like a dog that she can name Rover. Red. What? <laughs> nice. And now it's going full circle. Yeah, again. that's right. I, I love did it. that. I love I did this. That. But no, I don't think she needs a love interest, and that's so annoying. No, I agree. To write a, I a strong agree female character, like the thing is, it didn't. Black Widow is so small of a character in the Avengers movies anyways. Mm -hmm. Why did she need to have a love interest? It's like, and why did it have to be the Hulk? No one loves the Hulk. That's why he's the Hulk. He's creepy and weird. (laughs) He's Edward Norton, who I love, but he's creepy. Yeah. I'm just saying. Thor only had a love interest for one movie, and then she disappeared. Yeah. Everyone's okay with it. I mean, the fact that she's in the movie so rarely, Mm -hmm. and now the central plot of hers is love interest. (laughs) Yep. It just, it's aggravating. It's insulting. So she's yeah. the only girl Avenger. I mean, you, I guess you have Scarlet Witch, and she, but she, even she gets a love interest. Mm-hmm. The, she does? The machine. Oh, yeah, the vision. Yes. And she literally yes, is the strongest right. of all of them. She's basically Jean Grey. Yeah. She's like I Jean Grey light. They're equivalent to it, yeah. I mean, their version, yes. But she's an X-Men. Technically, she's Scarlet Technically, Witch. Technically, yes. She, she just can't be in the X-Men universe because X-Men is owned by Sony, but she is Fox. Scarlet, whatever. She is Scarlet Witch. She's almost as strong as Jean Grey. Why does she need to have a love interest? I know they actually are love interests in the comics, so that one I do understand. But I don't think the Hulk and Black Widow are, so that was just weird. Oh, they've been around for decades and decades. I'm sure it was written into a comic arc at some point. Well, everything but has I been agree written into with a com- you. But I'm just saying, I agree with you. I feel like there's more important things to worry about than, like, 
her having a love interest like you know the fact that like aliens new york is being destroyed aliens Maybe? are coming from the sky uh-huh you've got some sort of weird fucking robot with no coherent plot whatsoever trying to you know destroy sokovia who cares about sokovia i don't know who cares about sokovia if i was an avenger i'd be like eh. I, don't, I don't know i'd be a bad avenger so i'd be like nah, i could help them but i'd rather not yeah you're kind of like a chick deadpool yeah i kind of i i would I that I would help you, but I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so comics that you read, what are you into reading? I don't really read comics at the moment. I'm like falling off the train because I have no stores near me. Um, yeah, she lives in the white people topia. She doesn't have comic books, Robbie. We've literally had this conversation. I actually just started getting back into video games because the discourse <gasps> is so disgusting for women. Because, okay, That's when true. <laughs> kids turn around 12, the boys start sounding less like girls, so the girls become more obvious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, you're a girl? You have boobs? What? And they either kill you on sight or give you all this special treatment, which I was not interested in. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to pay $60 to experience this every single day. Yep. So. Accurate. Yeah. No, it does. It does suck. I don't know. There's something about being on message boards or and it, where where men, if they find out you're a girl, feel like they either have to white knight you or they have to call you every name in the book and wish you have cancer. And there's actually a really funny um, Tumblr I used to read called Slut or Whore, and it was women would take screenshots. And it was always stuff like either like, oh, I want to have sex with you. Can I show you my dick? Or I hope you get raped and get cancer and die. And it's like, that's awesome. That's really yeah. good job. That's, that's like playing Call of Duty. You know, with yeah. a headset. But they would screenshot it and you wouldn't think there'd be any material. Oh my God, there was like 700 posts a day. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And they were all, some of them were vicious. I was like, and it was all like, all that happened is the girl like got like a slightly higher score. And the guy was like, you've made me feel bad about my masculinity. So I need to say, how I hope you get raped and die. That's why it was really funny. There was this act or this um, journalist, I think, who used to actually hunt those people down and mm. go talk to their mothers. And I just think that's fucking brilliant. That's she would, fantastic. She would send like links to their mother's Facebook and be like, this is what your son is saying on the Internet. And I bet you a lot of little boys lost their privileges for weeks. Fucking keyboard hero. Saying, I love it. I'm saying this as a mother of a little boy. If I mm -hmm. ever found out my son did that, oh, oh, oh he better run. He better run to the other, because that's the only place he's going to be safe. The other where? Yep. <laughs> I mean, run to the those, other? <laughs> those demons will treat him a lot better than me, or whatever they are. Oh, yep. the silt? They're scary. Yeah, well, I'm scarier. <laughs> I don't oh. doubt that. Oh, boy. You better pray to Jesus. Oh, man. The Book of Rover. The Book of Rover. I really want Chris to write a companion novel for a this. Companion of all his knowledge a compendium of his knowledge indeed i want him to actually write the book of rover like a companion piece to go with it and drop it after the first well, season he did hashtag bring george r. r martin on our webs or on our podcast so we'll do hashtag chris write the book of rover that's true chris get on it people please petition chris please to write it. the book of rover i would read the shit out of that even if i don't see why not pictures make a picture book um pop -up it would book. be very violent a pop-up book yay like be how to decapitate silt that would be, oh my god, that would be fucking awesome. There's no way that doesn't sell a fucking million copies. There's a lot of ways that doesn't sell a million copies. There are no ways that are conceivable to my mind. I don't think a million people know it exists yet. I mean, I think it's- They will by I the mean, time the first season is done. I'm just saying, it's, it's, been, it's been two episodes. Like, give it time to grow before you say a million people are going to buy it. Because if a million people don't buy it, then Chris will have to murder you. And I would be really sad. A million people will buy a pop-up book where you decapitate silt. A million people will buy that. Or 500,000, and those people will buy two copies. One or I'm not the saying other. it won't happen. I'm, I think it will happen. I'm just saying if you put it out today, it wouldn't happen. But if you put it no. out next year, I can see it happening. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm not doubting it. I one. think this is going to blow up like Limetown or the Black Tapes. I think Fucking it's a. really, really good. But at the same time, let's give it time to grow before we start doing marketing for it. Oh, I'm Very not, true. I'm I not, mean, like pop-up books. <clears throat> merchandising was the word, not marketing. Yeah. Mer mer no. Ex world expansion merchandising. Thank you. Kind of like, um, like Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was for the Harry Potter verse. Yeah. yeah. Cats. Fun. Didn't they come out with a companion book? Yes, that was actually done years ago for, for charity. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Dropping I think, that I think there's a, I think there's a 
a script version now, but mm. uh, there was actually a small book that came out. She did them for she did that and like a history of magic for uh, they were little small books like thirty pages, and she did them for charity because she didn't need the money because she was she a owns a castle millionaire. now. Yeah, because she's freaking J.K. Rowling who wrote Harry Potter, and now she has her own theme park. Eat that, Stephen King. Where's your theme park? You think she does that? She's like, where's your theme park, Stephen King? What? I mean, a Stephen King theme park sounds pretty terrifying. <laughs> if you ask me, like, saying, like, I want to go there, but I don't. I'm just saying, like, every time I feel like, like all the writers that are famous get around and talk to each other, uh-huh. and they probably down, like, they kind of talk down to her because she just, I mean, she wrote a kids book, and she's like, yeah, where's your theme park? Everybody else? Oh yeah, that's right. None of you bitches have one. What? And then she like she drops the mic. In fact, mm. she has two. She has two theme parks. That's true. One in Florida, one in Hollywood or in California. And I think they're building one in Japan. Yeah. So she mm-hmm. has three theme parks. Damn. Expelliarmus indeed. So she's probably like, yeah, you know what? You guys all talk down to me because I wrote a kid's book. I have a freaking theme park. What? And then Stephen King is like, I wrote the Dark Tower series. She's like, yeah, you just ripped off parts of Harry Potter and your own work. And I have a theme park and you don't. What? That's what she does. I mean, she does it in British accent, so it's classier. But I'm not doing my British accent right now. All right, last couple of questions before we wrap up. As far as houses in Harry Potter, I think everybody agrees and everybody knows that I would 100% be House Slytherin. I would totally be a Ravenclaw. Madison, what would you be? I am definitely a Gryffindor, and I Woo! hate that I'm a Gryffindor. I had a fight with my teacher about this once. You're a begr- you're a begrudging Gryffindor. I am because I was convinced I was a Ravenclaw for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And this was before Pottermore was like a thing. (laughs) So I went up to him and and he's a very big Harry Potter nerd is my old theater teacher. And I was like, I'm definitely a Ravenclaw, blah, blah, blah. He goes, no, you're a Gryffindor. You're not smart enough to be a Ravenclaw. And he would bicker back and forth about it for ages. And he goes, there's this thing called Pottermore. Take the test and come talk to me tomorrow. Yep. And I got Gryffindor, and I was so mad going to that class. I was like, how did you hack this page? How did you do it? I was like, what did you do? What did you do? Did you talk to J.K. Rowling? Like, what did you do? I know this is you. This isn't me. This is you. So I took it again, and I got Gryffindor again. Yep. So I kind of just had to accept it. So you had to accept the fact that you are indeed a Gryffindor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it happens to the right. best of us. I'm a, I'm a proud Slytherin. Not a Death Eater, but a Slytherin. Unquestionably. Slytherins are cool. I don't have a problem with them. Uh, I love that that meme that they showed me a really long time, uh, that Dan Allison showed us about, like, um, the perfect personifications of the people. Like, if I had a magic knife, I would use it, you know, to save the world. I would use it to figure out things. I would use it to hurt people. I would make toast! <laughs> 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 I love Hufflepuffs. They're the best. Hufflepuffs are the best. Seriously. All the best people are Hufflepuffs. Everyone I know who I think is a Hufflepuff are like the best people. Mm-hmm. They're they're. Yeah. Big. I'm a Ravenclaw though because I couldn't be any. I'm. I could never be a Slytherin. Oh, I'm. I'm not enough. If, if, I'm not in, enough for my self interest, and I'm not brave. But I'm very very smart. You are. Hashtag I'm so smart. <laughs> my IQ is a billion. So the way that this is tying in because I brought it up a little bit ago. We're going to find out later these faction mottos. Mm -hmm. As far as the litmus test goes, because we don't quite know them just yet. I don't don't know them enough to say which one I am. Exactly. Madison, where would you put us? What factions would you put us in? Does she know the factions better than us? Oh, God. Yeah, I do. I know them very well. I know a lot of information about them that I can't talk about. Yeah, she can't. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not asking you you to, you know, give us any spoilers or anything unless you want to. (laughs) 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 I want my job. So, (laughs) no thanks. Um, But what, what factions would we go into? I think you could give us that much just to tease the I'm audience. I'm going to the kitty yeah. cat faction. Meow. Brooke, I can see you in Conquest. Yay! I can believe that. I believe that. I buy that. I can definitely see you in Conquest. Yay. And Rob, I can see you probably death. I knew it. Yay! I knew death. What do you mean probably? Was there another choice? Yeah, it was between death and war, but most you're like mostly death. That's nice. That's so morbid. You're mostly death. Okay. The sad thing is that's not the first time somebody said that sentence to me. And sadly, it probably will not be the last. Well, I mean, you know, it happens. I have a death tote bag 
and I had surgery a little while ago, and I brought my death tote bag to the hospital. And oh, that that's not, morbid. That did not go very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was it was a rough day. Wait, there's tote bags for Rover Red, or was it just a tote bag? That oh, no, had? there's tote bags that are there's up on bags. sale right now. I'm not a tote bag. There are tote bags, there are sweatshirts, and there are mugs. Mm-hmm. RoverRedPodcast.com slash store. Yeah, buy stuff from them and then spend the rest of your money on the Patreon for us so that we can Patreon.com slash Artful Gremlin. So based on that, I think uh I think it's time to get out of here. I think it's time to close the book. And thank you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This means the world. Well, thank you for coming on, and I'm glad we got you before you're famous. We can be like, yeah, we're the best. Until next time, I've been Robbie. I am Brooke spelled backwards. And I am Madison. Yay, Madison! Let's close the book on this week. Ciao!